Now, RFC 1998 is okay for simple multi-homing situations where mostly you have just one or two links to the same ISP and you have very simple needs to set local pref. Now, ISPs create backbone support for many other communities to handle more complex situations and the goal is to simplify the ISP BGP configuration. And initially, it looks a little bit more complicated, but the idea is the moment you have decided how things work, you set it up once and you don't have to keep fiddling each time. So this gives the customer more policy control over what's happening. Now, there are no recommended ISP BGP communities apart from what was documented in RFC 1998 and the five well-known communities which are mostly implemented by the router software. Um, but there have been a couple of efforts to document a few from time to time, a couple of uh, Nanog tutorials and some communities are listed at that website shown on the screen and not that much more. However, each ISP, especially the larger transit providers, tend to publish their ISP policy, either on the ISP's website or it will be in the autonomous system object inside the IRR, which is the Internet Routing Registry. Now, typically, you'll have these communities on the slide in front of you. So you'll have, wherever I see an X, that would be the S number of the ISP. And X80 would mean set a local preference of 80, which means this is a backup path. X120 would mean set a local preference of 120, which is a primary path. Remember the default local preference is 100, so you want to override the default. X1 would mean um, prepend the autonomous system number X once when announced the upstream. X2 would mean prepend it twice to the upstream. X3 would mean prepend it three times when you are announcing to the upstream. And then a special one which came up recently is the 666, which means you set the next hop to 192.0.2.1. And this is a black hole route. Um, it's very useful for um, DOS attack mitigation and it can be propagated along the different upstreams pretty quickly so that um, if you're facing a DDoS, you just um, attach that community to the network that um, is at facing the attack and everybody upstream knows to black hole it. So let's look at a couple of examples. The first one that we're going to look at um, is on the screen in front of you. We have a router inside AS100 and a couple of customers, right? A uh, customer is in AS130 and an upstream is on AS200. So for the customer who's on AS130, we are going to use the customer policy on the inbound direction. And when we are propagating it to the upstream in AS200, we're going to use the upstream dash out route map in the outbound direction. As usual, we create our community list so that we can easily match the different communities that could be attached to any advertisement coming towards us. So community list one matches 100 colon one, community list two, 100 colon two, all the way to community list six, which is the black hole route and matches 100 colon 666. And then we create a static route, uh, route to 192.0.2.1, to null zero. This is convention. So if we look at the customer policy on the inbound, um, this is what you have on the screen. So for the first statement, it's a permit 10 and we match community four, which remember community four matches 100 colon 80. And we set the local preference to 80. For the next statement, we match community five, set the local preference to 120. And for the next one, we match the community list six, which sets the IP next hop to 192.0.2.1. And we've already told the router to reach that address by shunting it to now zero. And it goes on and on and on to um, match these different communities and do exactly what we would expect them to do. Now, to the upstream, we have this route map that you have on the screen. Route map upstream dash out on permit 10 for 
community one, we want to set the prepend just once. So we prepend our S 100 once. For matching community two, we prepend twice. So we have set S path prepend 100, 100. And then the third time uh, we have a match community three and we prepend three times, etc. And this is a way to quickly um, implement the policy that we described in the previous slides. Now, if you look at an example of Sprint, which is what you see on the screen, um, this is what they publish as their routing policy. And you can get it from the Sprint website uh, on sprint.net, and you look at the policy, and that's the URL at the bottom. And as you can see, their S number is on the left, the string, and the different communities that they want and what they're going to do when you send them those communities. This is NTNT's example, and you can see it's very, very similar in the way they construct it, and it looks very much like our examples that we have just gone through. And more information can be looked at that URL that's on the screen right now, which is their website, and it's their routing policy on their website. Verizon Europe, this is out of the Internet Routing Registry, and um, you can get this output from Whois, and this is an example of the kind of data and the kind of way they shall specify what they expect you to do. And they just use the remarks field to do the same description that we've seen on the previous slides. Telia has this one as well, and you have very many more that have been snipped from this output. And this is also from the IRR, so you can see that output inside who is. BT Ignite um, for the European backbone also looks like this, and it's slightly different in the way they specify what they want you to send compared to the other two. And level three looks like this. They have different sections, and they're just using the remarks field. And that's it.